I'm Holly Seacon, Associate Editor with GreenBiz, and today I'm here with Janice Searles-Jones, CEO of the Ocean Conservancy. Um, I know you're speaking a little bit later today at GreenBiz 19, so do you want to tell me a little bit about that? I would love to. Uh, one of the things that I am going to be pleased to talk about later this afternoon is Ocean Conservancy's bold new goal to end the flow of plastic in the ocean by 2030. That is a very ambitious goal, and part of the reason why we wanted to announce it at GreenBiz is that we need all of the companies here to participate with us in achieving that goal. Right now, there are 8 million metric tons of plastic flowing into the ocean every year. That's the equivalent of a garbage truck a minute, which is really extraordinary and not acceptable. And so it's very urgent to solve this problem right now, and our number one priority is to stop the flow of plastic waste into the ocean as fast as we can. So what are you looking for with these other companies um, in partnering with them? Uh, we are looking for participation in accomplishing that goal. It's a really complex problem. It is about an entire global system of consumption, so that implicates packaging and products and business models and policies and consumers. And so there is a lot that corporations that are interested in baking sustainability into their business models, there's a lot that they can do to participate with us and to contribute to that goal. Have you already started working on this goal? Do you already have partners on board? Or? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So several years ago when we first started uh, really investing in the science and understanding where that trash was coming from, we decided to start the Trash Free Seas Alliance, which is a cross-sector platform where we have the private sector, we have academics and scientists, and we have NGOs, and we all gathered together to figure out what is the science-based, impact-driven solution set that we could all achieve together. And that led us to evaluate where where the major influxes of plastic were coming, and that led us to a couple of key focal geographies where it turns out that the pace of economic development is really outstripping the pace of infrastructure development. So it turns out this is a waste management issue and a waste management-based solution. And so that led us upstream, which was interesting for an ocean conservation <laughs> organization, and we started really evaluating what the barriers were to getting collection set up in these countries. And it turns out that funding and finance was a big barrier. And so that's what led us to a partnership with Circulate Capital, uh, which is an impact investment firm, and now we have plastics manufacturers and consumer brands who are putting money into an impact investing firm, <coughs> excuse me, to invest in collection in these countries, and that will have a significant impact on the amount of plastic that's flowing into the ocean. What's your ultimate dream for this project and Ultimate dream is that by 2030, we have no more plastic flowing into the ocean yeah. because just in the last hour, we've had another 916 tons mm -hmm. flow into the ocean. Yeah. So what about you? What has gotten you interested in sustainability work? I come to this work um, from the perspective of a litigator. I used to be a lawyer, and I was very much interested in governance and thinking about um, sustainability from a governance perspective. Um, but mm -hmm. I'm also a human being. I'm a mom. Um, I run an NGO. And when I think about sustainability, um, for me, it's about fundamentally redesigning our relationship to the ocean, because that's what mm -hmm. I'm focused on conserving. Um, and for, I think, all of us in the ocean plastic space, it's about redesigning our relationship with plastic. And I think that sustainability needs to be a core part of corporation and private sector goals because it's the only thing that's going to keep this planet livable for all of us. So ocean plastics have gotten a lot of interest in the last year. Mm -hmm. They've been a bit of a trend. Um, <laughs> but how have you been able to, I guess, capitalize on the excitement? Or has how have you felt about you know, um, it entering the public consciousness. So Ocean Conservancy has been working on uh, ocean trash for 30 years with mm -hmm. a focus on science-based and impact-driven solutions. Ocean plastic has really come to the fore, as you mentioned, over the past several years. In 2017, the International Coastal Cleanup, which we orchestrate, that was the first time in 30 years that plastic was the top 10 items. Every single item in the top wow. 10 items collected worldwide on beaches and waterways was made out of plastic. Wow. And so we have done a lot of work, and there is an entire community um, around raising people's awareness about how much plastic is in the ocean. And I do think that those images, like the seahorse wrapped around the Q-tip, 
uh, or the yeah. sea turtle with a straw embedded in her nose. Those are incredibly uh, arresting images and they demonstrate with real crystal clarity that plastics don't belong in the ocean. Mm -hmm. The other piece of that puzzle is to imagine a coastline that has a garbage dump on it or a bay that's entirely filled with floating plastic. Mm -hmm. And so it's not just about Q-tips and straws. It is a systemic problem, and it requires a systemic solution, and that's part of the reason why we're here today. Great. Well, thanks so much for taking the time to talk to me today. Um, it's great to have you here at GreenBiz19, and I'll let you get over to your session, and um, have a great rest of your day. Thank you.